Hello, fellow Husker alums. My name is Mike Riley. I'm the founder of Journalist Toolbox AI. Uh, and we're going to talk about some of the AI tools uh, that I mentioned in my Alumni Association article today. Uh, and you can kind of see them in action and uh, kind of work along at home. Um, one thing you might want to open up uh, and browse through is journalisttoolbox.ai. It's a website with all kinds of AI tools in them. Uh, helpful not just to journalists, but really to anybody. Uh, and you can go through here uh, and uh, open up any of these pages. And, you know, this one here is on uh, video creation. Uh, you can open it up and there's all kinds of free and some paid tools. Uh, I usually mark them if they're paid. Uh, tools that'll help you with uh, video editing, video creation, you know, text to video tools, uh, video editing tools, things like that. Watch it. Video.ai uh, is a really good one as well. Keyframe Studio, a few others in here. So there's all kinds of tools in here that are helpful to you. We're going to focus on a few of them that are in the article today. Uh, so if you want, open our handout here. It's bit.ly slash Husker AI, easy one to remember. Uh, maybe hit pause and open up bit.ly, uh, bit.ly slash Husker AI. And there's all these tools listed in here that were from the article. Um, so if you want to kind of play along at home, uh, you can open those up uh, and have them ready to go. Um, a couple of them re require login, uh, Discord and MidJourney. Uh, you have to create a login too. Uh, but the others uh, are all kind of open source and, and you can just use them anywhere. I also have a little practice story here that, uh, you know, if you have some of your own writing that you want to use for the headline, run, headline writing tool uh, or for uh, the editing uh, tools, you can use your own work or you can you know, use this little practice story I have here. So go ahead and hit pause and then we'll go ahead and get started. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, the first tool we're going to work with is called Headline Hero. And Headline Hero uh, allows us to take a story and drop it into the interface uh, and ask it to write headlines, however many you want. I think up to five you get uh, for free. Uh, and then uh, we'll ask it to give us certain keywords we want in it and so on and so on. We can also set the length of the headline. Uh, so I'm going to move this up. I'm going to give it about 110 words and between 70 and 110 characters, excuse me. Uh, and this will be the length of my headline. You can adjust this around if you're writing, you know, print headline uh, for a story or, you know, newsletter or something. Uh, you'd move, slide this down. Probably if you're writing it for online, you'd go just a little bit higher, maybe. Um, and I'll drop in my article here. I always put in the paragraphs, kind of break it up a little bit uh, just to make it a little easier for it uh, uh, to read through what's there. Uh, and then I'm going to have it include, this is a little article that uh, one of my students had worked on at University of Illinois at Chicago. It hasn't been edited yet, so you know I'm kind of running raw uh, information through here. I, typically, I do the headline at the end. I'm going to have it include the word CTA and writership in it. And this is a little story the student wrote about uh, writership on the L trains and buses in Chicago dropping after the pandemic and continuing to drop. Um, I can uh, ask it to make the headline in the form of a question, which I won't do here, or as a quote. Um, those are kind of gimmicky headlines. I rarely use that. Uh, but I want a headline between 70 and 110 characters uh, with CTA and ridership in it. Hit generate, and it'll kick me back some headlines. Now, a couple of them probably aren't going to be very good, uh, but there might be a couple in here that are good. Uh, and I can take them and maybe tweak them and, and shorten them a bit, tighten them up a bit uh, to fit. Uh, my uh, uh, uses. So, uh, you know, the ghost city phenomenon, you know, I, I would never use a headline like that. Um, Chicago's public transportation crisis, CTA ridership remains low amid unreliable and safe condition and unsafe conditions. Uh, pretty good one. Uh, CTA, I wouldn't call it a crisis, probably. I mean, they're concerned about it. Uh, Post pandemic Chicago, how CTA ridership and un Reliable services, and the article talks about that, uh, continue to frustrate commuters. So I would go with either one or three here. You can hit the copy button, copy it, uh, and then drop it uh, into your uh, story as the headline. Uh, typically on uh, a story or whatever I'm, I'm working on, uh, newsletter and so on, if I use AI to generate the headline, I mentioned that in the editor's note uh, at the end. I tell the reader that uh, uh, that content is uh, produ partially produced by artificial intelligence. And of course, you know, I would go in and edit these, maybe tighten them up a little bit. Here's another good tool is the Hemingway app, HemingwayApp.com, it's called Hemingway Editor. Um, all it does is evaluates uh, the block of text that you drop into the area. So I'll delete this out. Uh, and as you can see, 
Um, and when I edit the headline, I'm going to actually edit the copy here. Uh, as you can see with it, uh, it gives you the color coding. The color coding in Hemingway tells you what kind of mistake uh, is in there. Uh, and again, you don't have to use, you know, con consider this a suggestion, you know, it, uh, uh, you know, uh, it really goes through here and flags things like, you know, four of the 15 sentences are hard to read. Uh, it says, uh, you know, oh, this is passive voice here, but really in this uh, sentence, you really can't get around it. Uh, it also flags adjectives and adverbs uh, in blue, which is nice. You know, you might want to think about editing those out, um, depending on what type of writing you're doing. Um, and then uh, it also has things like, uh, you know, there's simpler alternative phrases you could use or, uh, you know, just ways to tighten up uh, the, the writing. So, uh, you know, this one, I would probably use maybe a third of what it suggests here, uh, but it does flag some things that, you know, your usual grammar check and spell check aren't going to catch. Um, so a good little, you know, kind of quick evaluation tool uh, for your writing. Um, another good one is this one called Quillbot. Um, uh, Quillbot only uh, measures uh, uh, short passages uh, in their free version. There is pricing uh, up here where it says upgrade. Uh, you can upgrade to a uh, paid version of it, a premium version of it, where you get, you know, 6,000 words in the summarizer. It does more things, you know, synonym options and things like that. Um, but, you know, I can drop this in here. Uh, you know, it, it'll give me sample text or, you know, I can paste text in as well. Um, uh, and then I can uh, drop it in there or I can just paste it in like this. Um, and then I can go through uh, and I can do this in multiple languages. It's really nice. Um, uh, it'll go through and uh, I can ask it to do different things, you know, formal mode example, you know, do I want it for press uh, essays or a, a professional presentation? Is it a cover letter? And it's really good for work, uh, emails, uh, you, know, uh, you know, if you're writing a cover letter of some kind. Uh, it's got things like SEO titles. So it's different, breaks it down by different types of writing. Um, I'll drop mine into uh, maybe shorten a little bit. I want to uh, tighten it up a little bit more as a summary. Um, so, you know, it'll go through uh, and evaluate that. And, you know, some of these have premium modes here uh, that uh, will allow me to do uh, a little bit more with it. Um, so it'll take and paraphrase uh, what you've written here into just a few uh, uh, paragraphs. Um, uh, it works well, you know, with quotes, too. If you're quoting someone uh, verbatim and you want to take what they said and paraphrase it, uh, it'll do it in here as well. And as you can see here, it cuts off right here and starts to gray out. Uh, it limits you in the free version, the number of characters uh, you can drop in here. It's just a few hundred. Um, so after that, it's got a plagiarism checker in here, grammar checker, all kinds of different tools over here on the left-hand side that you can use. But I was in the summarizer tool uh, over here. So, uh, you know, a very versatile tool that'll let you do uh, many different things. And like I say, the free version uh, up to a certain length will work very, very, very well for you. Um, Adobe Firefly, this is one that I talked about in the article, uh, their text to image tool, it's firefly.adobe.com. So people that brought you Adobe Premiere video editing and Photoshop and all those great tools are now into the AI world. Photoshop now has AI tools built into it. So you can go and hit the generate button here and I can do what's called a prompt. We talked about that in the article, writing a prompt, asking it to do something. Um, and I'm gonna have it build a uh, illustration of a four bedroom home. Red shutters, a lawn and landscaping. I'll make it gray, gray and red, why not? I should make it scarlet and cream, shouldn't I? Um, and they go uh, generate. It gives me four different options on my images. The really cool thing about this tool, which separates it, I think, from a lot of the other uh, text to image tools, uh, is it gives me editing tools over here. So I can pick, you know, a filter, digital art, uh, palette knife, or, you know, uh, apply several different types of styles here. Um, I can do it more as a photo rather than art or, you know, change it to a graphic. Uh, I've used this prompt many times, and each time it gives me something a little more realistic. Um, which is really cool to see. You know, it looks like an architectural rendering. I mean, this isn't, you know, picture quality. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. You can change the lighting to, you know, being from the, you know, backlit or dramatic lighting, things like that. It'll, it'll uh, uh, change it up. Um, you can rate the result, give them some feedback on it. Download button right here, downloads it right to your, uh, uh, right to your uh, hard drive uh, in your downloads folder. 
Um, it also uh, mentions, you know, the fact that uh, the content credentials will be included in the image when it comes through. So if you go to Photoshop and open it up and file info, it'll have some basic information you know, about it being generated in Adobe Firefly and it used AI, which is great for transparency for your images. Um, again, you want to identify this as a photo illustration created with uh, artificial intelligence. So uh, you've got your image and I'll go ahead and hit continue and it'll download. And you know, now I've got it uh, yeah, just dropped into my folder over there. So now I've got this image. Um, since you have written this prompt, uh, this image or whatever it creates for you uh, is you're the rights holder to that image. Um, so you can reverse image search it in Google search and see, uh, you know, if somebody else has taken your image and used it. But you're the ultimate rights holder to whatever you write and put in here. Um, somebody else may do a similar uh, uh, prompt uh, or the same prompt in, in a few hours and get an entirely different result. Um, so keep that in mind. You know, you're the rights holder to that image because you created it in Firefly, you own it. Um, Midjourney and Discord uh, do something very similar. You can create really cool images. I use this sometimes for section headers or cutaway versions of a car, things like that. Uh, in uh, uh, section headers, meaning for, for a website, things like that. We got Trump here. <laughs> uh, a few other things. Uh, you know, uh, this one was a good food journalism example here a breakfast bowl with strawberries and blueberries. Uh, so if you need to generate something like that very quickly, you can do that by setting up a free account in midjourney.com. And also in Discord, Discord is where you do the, actually do the work. You prompt it here, uh, and then it kicks over to MidJourney once you've completed it. And these are some of the past ones that I've built. Um, so I can go in here and tell it to imagine, hit the slash sign and type imagine. Imagine, and it gives me a prompt at the very bottom. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the breakfast bowl again, a breakfast bowl. Whole grain, strawberries, and blueberries. Now you can do more advanced stuff with this. You can ask for it to be uh, uh, in a certain cinematic mode, uh, uh, you know, a certain lens or a certain filter with it. Uh, you can also ask it to stylize something uh, as though it was part of a certain film. Uh, film director, you know, stylize this as though it were a Steven Spielberg film. You now, really cool stuff you can do with this. Um, and on the Journalist Toolbox AI site, uh, under uh, image uh, uh, tools, image creation tools, uh, I've got a lot of different uh, prompt generators in there where you can go in and just pull all kinds of really cool things. And now it's generated, you know, a few images I can look at. Um, the U stands for upscale. The V stands for version, what version of, of uh, MidJourney. At the time I'm recording this, it's version five. Um, so maybe I wanted this one here of, uh, you know, this one has bananas in it, which I didn't ask for. This one gave me uh, version three. So I'm going to upscale that one uh, and it'll improve the quality of it, really, you know, a high res version of it. Um, and, you know, uh, I can vary it a little bit or I can zoom out or zoom in. It's got zoom features on this now. Uh, so if I wanted to zoom out, two times, uh, it'll zoom out and give me a little wider shot of it, which is really cool, especially if you're doing like a panorama or something like that. Um, and then I can just hit web uh, and move it over to my website, uh, to my MidJourney account, uh, and it'll show up there. It takes a couple of minutes, usually it'll kick through. Uh, and when you set this up, always set up uh, your uh, Discord account first and then connect it to MidJourney by you know setting up a MidJourney account. And it will ask you for your pro uh, prompt login for uh, Discord. Um, now you have a very nice image here, you know, high resolution uh, uh, photo illustration that you could take, you know, and, and run. It's magazine quality. Uh, so I can hit the save button there and it'll download the image for me. Um, so those are a few of the tools. Um, take some time to experiment with these. As I mentioned in the article, don't rush with them. You know, just take your time. Uh, incorporate a few of these into your workflow, start experimenting with the ones in, in journalisttoolbox.ai and expand your horizons. It'll really help you uh, down the road. Hope you found this useful. Go Oscars.